told you that next week you guys are going to learn about the pig, but this week you're going to be learning about the snake. Mm -hmm. An animal tells a snake. And so my question for you is what is a snake's favorite subject in school? <laughs> You're right. History. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You, I'm impressed. How did you know that? Did you do that? Did you read my chapter notes? <laughs> that one was. Uh, look, she's like, she's guilty. She's guilty. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, guys, I hope y'all can head on over to the kids' wing. Olivia, tell me all about the snake. What did you learn from the snake? Yeah, what is the snake all about? I'm sure y'all are interested about that too, aren't you? Yeah, I'm curious now. That's right, it has nothing to do with the snake. Caleb's like, I know. <laughs> yeah? You think? I bet you probably do. Well, guys, I am so glad y'all are here today. You know, it's easy to miss church, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it really is. Or, or even if you're joining online, it's easy to go, eh, I'm just going to scroll past that particular video. I'm too busy for this today. Everyone is so busy nowadays, aren't they? Everyone is. I bet if we stopped and categorized everything we do in a week, we would be in awe of each other's schedule. Our jaws would drop when we go, you do all that in one week? Don't you sleep? <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot to put that on the list. Um, sleep a little bit. <laughs> right? I bet you feel like that as well. Yeah. Many of us go from the moment our alarms go off until extremely late at night. And even when we lay down on our bed, our brain is going to buzz, going, oh, I didn't finish that today. Oh, I didn't finish this. Oh, I better move that to tomorrow. But tomorrow's schedule is kind of full, so I better move that stuff down to the next week. Am I right? You're constantly going, almost like a motor. It never, ever turns off. It's true. We are busy. It, it makes me think of something that I heard one time. In the book, Hamlet's Blackberry, the author William Powers tells a story about a friend who came from another country. This lady's name was Maria, and she would always answer him when she, he would ask her, how are you doing, as busy, very busy. Every single time he asked her that, how are you doing today, Rick? Oh, I'm busy, very busy. busy. And it puzzled him. Because she would always say it with this cheerful, smiling attitude. Oh, I'm busy. Very busy. And the more he looked into it, he found out why she answered that way. After she moved to the States, she started trying to pick up what did people say? How do you respond to questions? And she realized that almost everyone she ever asked how they were doing would answer busy, very busy. And so she honestly thought that was the correct way you answered the question, how are you today? <laughs> Is that where you are? Busy. Very busy? No. I... That, yeah, that begs the question, what would help us to hang on to an inner peace and balance when life seems so busy? Yeah. When our life is busy, very busy. Oftentimes we wear busyness almost like a badge of honor. Yeah. When someone asks us, so how are you today? We almost enjoy telling them, oh, I'm busy. I'm very busy. It, despite the reasons why we're busy, busyness can harm our relationships. It can cause us to miss out what really is the purpose of life. Busyness can be stemmed from a pride or ego. Yeah. You see, business may feed our ego, but it will starve our soul. Busyness puffs us up, or it can puff us up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a pride that we can wear that says, look at everything we're accomplishing. Look at my schedule. I am so needed by everyone. 
Oh, I, this person needs me today. Oh, this thing is, needs to be accomplished and only I can do it. Oh, this needs to be done. It can be fed by a sense of pride. Or our busyness could be driven by a fear. The fear of missing out. Oh, if I don't go to this meeting, I might get overlooked. Oh, I would really hurt this person's feeling if I don't go to that party, which if they're mad at me, there's no telling what's going to happen to me. It could be driven by pride or fear. But either way, busyness needs to be dealt with. You see, there are things that we can do that would help us to hang on <coughs> to inner peace and balance when life seems busy. Very busy. Mm. Some of those things, of course, are, we know already. We know we should probably be eating right. Mm. How many of you, when you're busy, oh, very busy, you, you just like, you know what, let's just go drive into yeah. Taco Bell and grab ah, well, yeah. go back to Taco and eat it really quickly. And she says, how soon? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should be exercising. Uh, yes. no. That helps build out stress. Uh, <laughs> We should be resting. We know these things. When life seems busy, very busy, we usually will run ourselves right. Trying to accomplish the next thing. Making sure that either we look good and it gets done, or we don't miss out on something that could be fun. There was an individual who had a busy, very busy life. That individual we, I'm going to look at today is Jesus. Jesus consistently had people asking him questions. He consistently had people that were challenging him, waiting for him to make a mistake, hoping he would make a mistake sometimes. He had people that would go, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me, when he was going from one place to another. And yet... Throughout scripture, you never see where he didn't have inner peace and balance. You never see where he got stressed out. You don't see where all of a sudden he was like, I gotta go take care of this, I gotta take care of that. I, can't, I, can't, I cannot minister to you right now because I need to go over here to Jerusalem. Leave me alone. <laughs> right? You never see that. So there must have been something that Jesus was doing that we can learn about, where we can gain that same inner peace and balance despite how busy, very busy life is around us. That's what I'd like to talk to you today. Let's look at a few verses that I believe really is part of the secret that I personally am still trying to learn on how to have that inner peace and balance when our lives are busy, very busy. These are just a few of the scriptures that I found. Matthew 14, 23. After sending them home, this is right after a huge miracle. He went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell when he was there alone. Or while he was there alone. Mark 1, 35. In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place. And was praying there. Luke 6, 12. One day soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. John 17. I put Jesus' prayer. That entire chapter really is the Lord's prayer. It was a model of the way Jesus really prayed. You see, Jesus, despite how busy, very busy, his life was, was a man devoted to prayer. Yes. There are numerous verses throughout Scripture that talk about Jesus prayed. There's, there's instances where he prayed alone. There's instances where he prayed in public. There's some where he prayed before, especially major decisions, right before he picked the 12. You read the verse right before, it said he went and prayed. The next morning, he chose his 12 disciples. He prayed before miracles. He prayed after miracles. He prayed in the morning. During the day and at night, Jesus modeled how important prayer really is to an individual in a busy, very busy life. Prayer is simply talking 
with God. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, Notice I didn't say talking to God. I didn't say complaining yeah. to God. <laughs> I didn't say just going through a rote memorization tool. Prayer is talking to your Father. It's coming to Him and saying, God, this is what's going on in my life. These are my dreams. These are my successes. God, did you see? I actually did not give that person a piece of my mind. Aren't you proud of me? I wanted to. <laughs> but it's also coming to me going, you know what, God? Oh, Jesus. I failed today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't stay on the path you wanted me to. I made a mistake. Prayer is simply talking to God. And you know what? With that talking with God, God will talk back. Not audibly. Very, very rarely do you hear all of a sudden, Oh, oh, oh. amen. <laughs> I want you to go to Walmart. There'll be a girl in a white shirt. <laughs> you need to tell her that Jesus loves her. But no, you get a piece down here. Or you get a, a drawing or a pulling deep down here on the inside. And that's God talking to you. Sometimes it's just this overwhelming sense of it's going to be okay. Yep. yep. Sometimes it's you'll be praying about one thing and all of a sudden you'll just feel this, hey, I love you. Mm -hmm. Could God talks to you. It is prayer is simply talking with God. I don't have this, but I just thought of this. There, there, there was a gentleman one time, he said, people said, how do you pray with such a busy life? And his comment was, was how do you not pray in such a busy life? The busier our life is, the more we need to have that communion with God. Mm -hmm. The more busy, very busy we are, the more we need God to be there on our side. Yes. Though you may not be active during your prayer time, knocking out your to-do list, you really are actively engaged in a relationship that will strengthen you as you go through your busy, very busy life. You see, prayer is an act of believing that lightens your load. Here's what I mean. It is starving that prideful ego that I've got to get everything accomplished so people can watch me or it's also dealing with the fear that, oh, I might miss out if I don't do something. Because when you come in to pray, you are bringing your life to God. You're bringing your successes. You're bringing your failures. You're bringing the things that are, that are like bugging you so much, and you're relinquishing control. You're saying, God, I'm not in control of this busy schedule. God, I'm not in control of everything that's happening to me. I really, truly give it to you. When we bring him our problems and concerns, we give up the idea that it's up to us to fix everything. You know, in truth, when we come and we give up control of our lives to God, we really never had control of it in the first place, did we? We really ultimately don't have control of our lives. None of us here can really Change, add a day to our lives. None of us here can really make something great happen. We don't have control. We could walk out that door and get hit by a car. That wasn't in our control. We could walk out that door and have a, a sickness hit us all of a sudden. We're not in control of our lives. So prayer ultimately is saying, Father, I give you control of my life, which ultimately you had control in the first place, but I acknowledge I don't have control of it anymore. I give it up to you. I'm free to be under your control. When we pray, we're taking ourselves out of the hamster wheel of a busy life and placing it on God's potter's wheel. That's when He can fashion it for us, when we live a life of prayer, despite our busy, very busy life. There's a story in the Bible where a man named Jairus had a daughter. And his daughter became very ill. And Jairus sought out Jesus. 
He came to him and said, Jesus, my daughter is ill. I need you to hurry up and come touch her. Come heal her quickly so she doesn't die. And Jesus goes, yeah, let's go. I can do that right now. Can you imagine the way Jerry is felt? Yes, come on, let's go. We got to get there quick. Let's move, let's move, let's move. And the Bible says that this woman who had an issue of blood for as long as this little kid's been alive, 12 years, touched Jesus in the crowd. And Jesus, his virtue flowed out of him, and that woman was healed. There's still this problem going on to the side, but Jesus stops. Who touched me? And the woman responds, me. And the Bible says she goes on to tell everyone everything that's happened to her. Twelve years of problems. Everything she's tried to fix it. And that's great that this woman was healed. But have you ever thought about Jerry's? Jerry's is standing here on the side going, shut up, woman. My daughter's sick and we got to go now. I'm in a hurry. You're stopping Jesus from moving. Come on, let's go. Nope, here's the woman. And then I went to this doctor. And then my Aunt Bertha told me, da 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 And, and Jerry's like, quit. Hush, right, come on, we got to go, we got to go, let's go. I'm busy, come on, my daughter's sick. As that was happening, some people from Jerry's his own household comes and says, don't bother him anymore. She's dead. He didn't hurry up enough. You're too slow. You imagine a crush. If you just hurry longer, if you just move faster, my daughter would be alive. And Jesus says, don't worry about it. Let's go. She's just asleep. And he gets there doesn't kill her, he resurrects her from the dead. What's my point? Jairus had to trust Jesus in Jesus' timeline. When he came to Jesus, he gave up control over his daughter. Because he said, Jesus, only you can heal her. I know I can't. He gave up control of it. Jesus Slow down. And Jerry's had to wait. Sometimes in our busy lives, we expect God to move as fast as we want him to move. We want him to be busy, very busy, because that's our life. But God doesn't move in a busy, very busy life. He doesn't move in that timetable. He moves in his time. And sometimes he will deliberately make us slow down and wait <coughs> in order to do something greater in our life. See, Jairus could have known Jesus just as a healer. But Jairus learned by having to slow down and not hurry up so much that True, Jesus is a healer, but Jesus is also the one who can resurrect the dead. He had a greater revelation of who God was by learning to slow yes. down. By learning to give up control and not worry so much of what a busy, busy life can make us worry about. This week, we'll be tempted We'll be, we'll be tempted to allow ourselves to have a busy, very busy soul because of our busy, very busy life. We'll be tempted to allow the busyness of everything around us to get us stirred up on the inside. We'll want to try to take control of everything. We'll want to go, oh, I gotta knock this off my list. Oh, I gotta knock that off my list. Oh, snap, I forgot to do this too. I better go write it down. We'll be tempted to do that. However, in doing so, we will have no peace. Mm. Prayer is the way that we can have inner peace and balance despite a busy, very busy life. <laughs> if we slow down and pray and give our worries to God, we can have a Philippians experience. What is a Philippians experience, you ask? A 
I'm so glad you did. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> Good question. Good question. <laughs> Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Let's read it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Amen. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And His peace will guide your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. It starts with us not worrying about anything and praying about everything. Oftentimes we flip that, don't we? Yeah. And when we flip it, that's when we start getting round up, and that leads to a bunch of trouble. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. I just had this mental image. It's kind of like when you rev up an engine too much. What yeah. happens to the engine? Eventually it dies. Dies for a That's what we need to do with ourselves. If we allow ourselves to continually get wound up so much. Now, we could physically die, but I'm also thinking we could fall into sins we haven't fell into in a long time. Right. We right. could treat our family members the ways that we know we shouldn't treat our family members. We we could ruin our testimony like that to somebody we've been trying to show the love of Christ to. But if we don't worry about it, give up that control that we know we really don't have in the first place. Exactly. And pray about it. And realize, hey God, this is what I need. You've already taken care of me in the past. Then peace comes. And you have that inner peace and balance despite that busy, very busy life. You're going to go out with boldness and confidence and peace this week if you'll do this. This is something I'm still living to. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, every single one of us has life that goes a thousand miles a second. Oh yes. We have a lot to do. We have so much to accomplish. It could be good things. Work, commitments, family, even church. But I pray, God, that we take the time this week to slow it down, to take some deep breaths, to take care of this temple of the Holy Spirit, our bodies, and most importantly, time to spend with you in conversation, time to pray. We ask you, Father, that you would help us to not worry about anything, but pray about everything, and help us to truly experience the inner peace and balance that comes and that's available to us despite our busy, very busy life. Lord, we need you and we're calling out to you because we need peace during this time. Ultimately, oh, Jesus, we need you because you are our Prince of Peace. Lord, you love us. And all it is is us understanding that you're God. Yes. And you're the ultimate one who has control. Not us. So I pray, Father, that each one of us will do what's required, but that will take our hands off and allow you to have your way in our lives. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.